One of the most important skills that we have to have as self-defenders is knowing when to transition from verbal skills to use deadly force. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Iowa. This is badge camera of an officer involved shooting there that is gonna teach us important lessons about the importance of our verbal skills trying to de-escalate conflict. Also, the importance of working together with partners if we have them in our vicinity. And finally, when we need to change from using verbal skills to our deadly force tools. We have audio in the body cams on this one and it's very important to hear how the officers interacted with this man. So let's listen in and we'll come back at the end and learn some lessons. Firecracker. Is he back there? He's in the house. He's in the house now? Yes, what's the gun? Okay. Hey, put the gun down. Put the gun down. You put the gun down. Put the gun down now. Put it down. What's your name, sir? Sir, what's your name? No, I don't. I'm from Williamsburg, sir. I don't know who you are. County, we're here at gunpoint. He's got the shotgun in his hand, south side of the house. Can you tell me your name, sir? Nope, I don't want to do that. Lay down on the ground. Lay on the ground, please. Well, I'm not going to do that to you. I don't want to do that, sir. Let's just calm down, okay? This is just for our protection, all right? Okay, why don't you come over here to the front of the house and we'll talk about it. He's got the gun again. We need to talk to you, sir. We need to talk to you, all right? Get off my property. Hey, we need to figure this out. What? We need to figure out what's going on. I don't want to do that. Don't point that in my direction. Don't point that in my direction. I'm going to go around. You got him? I'm a fucking chief petty officer. You better not fucking shoot. Don't shoot. I will kill you. You point that at me again. Don't shoot into the next house. Yeah. Put it down. Put it down. I did. Jesus, he came around with it pointed right at me. Okay, when you put pressure on the wound, I'm gonna go. Yep, yeah, gloves. Ten thirty-three. Ten thirty-three. Lots to learn here from this one. And the first one, you see this officer here as he comes up on this guy and you can see him, he's got a shotgun in his hand right there, on, right next to the magazine well. And you see that that officer has to get a shot on target if he needed to there. Now knowing how to get your rifle up and on target and then assess and make deadly force decisions, it's probably the most important thing that any self-defender has to do, whether officer or not. I do love here that the officer got behind this vehicle. Now, of course, is the back of the car cover like the engine block is? No, but it is concealment. That's a good thing. And he does have that, that C pillar in the back of the car there to give him a little bit of cover, which is better than nothing. Now, the officer here has to pursue the guy because the guy goes out of his sight with a gun and we know he's a threat. If you're not a police officer, you probably wouldn't do that. But as an officer, you notice he keeps that rifle up so that he can use it if he needs to while he's telling that guy what to do. And you can see there just past his magazine well that this guy here has got a shotgun in his hands, but he's kind of waving it around. He's not really pointing it in a menacing way. And if you were listening on the body cam, he's trying to, to commit suicide by cop here. He is trying to say, you know, go ahead and shoot me. And the officer's saying, I don't want to do that. 
but he has to think about himself and about his fellow officers and about everybody else who's in this vicinity as well. I do love that the officer, you saw it in the body cam, he started talking about, hey, watch the backstop, but pay attention right here. That guy raised his shotgun up at the officer and the officer said, oh, don't point it at me again or I will shoot you. You got to know when it's time to stop talking and actually use your firearm. And the officer here didn't seem to do that. I don't want to give him too much of a hard time. He did the, you know, an okay thing here that the guy didn't shoot at him, but boy, did he put himself at risk if the guy decided to actually pull the trigger in that instance. And because he wasn't ready to, he didn't. Now, the second officer, on the other hand, he sees what's going on here, didn't have a shot here on this first one, but when he goes around the other side, you see he had almost the exact same problem. He comes up and the guy starts pointing a shotgun at him. Second officer didn't wait at all, and he didn't have any reason to wait. When the guy points a shotgun at you, you only have seconds to decide what you need to do. He decided to take the shot, and he put a, you know, a face full of buckshot on that guy. Well, probably not face, probably center chest. Now, finally, I really do want to think about the officer going back for his med kit. This is why I tell you, you got to have first aid skills, not only skills, but your equipment on you. I get it that the officer here is going to go and put his rifle away in the back of his truck. This is why you need a great two-point sling. A good two-point sling, you can tighten that sucker up real good, keep it sucked into your chest, or you can run it around to the back and keep it on you so that you didn't have that worry. If you had your med kit on your person, your significant medical kit, and I really think certainly every officer should have one, but I think that, that even a CCW holder, I carry a medical kit on me every day and you got to know where it is and how to use it. So these officers were in a really tough situation. I don't want to give them a hard time at all. That first officer had justification to use his, his rifle if he wanted to in that moment, though he was giving that guy every chance he could. Second officer used his shotgun very effectively to end the threat. And then let's keep our first aid kit on our person and our skills up up to par and our equipment so that we can use it immediately so that we can save lives if we need to while we cover our ASP.